Hello everybody, and welcome back to The Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass. I'm Zelda Master, and in this episode we're going to be taking out the Temple of Courage. So, what a place, the Temple of Courage, huh? I bet the Spear of Courage is here. Let's keep going, Link. And we're going to be doing just that. So, let's get started. As you can tell, Temple of Courage looks rather confusing because there's so many stairs and doors and just paths to other areas. But it's actually really linear because you can't really go all around this room uh, without opening up certain doors and taking certain paths that will take you to certain areas. So, yeah, um, it's not too hard, honestly. So, let's go ahead and get started uh, by avoiding these weird logs of spikiness and and stuff yeah you don't want to get hit by it because I believe it takes like half a heart or something so yeah and if you make our way over here you find a secret passage you go ahead and place a bomb here and I, I didn't mean to hit it with my sword but I want to go ahead and put it here I'm just gonna hit it with my sword because I don't really care basically what you want to do is explode this cracked wall and we'll give you a Rudo crown yeah and then we'll just wait for this uh, spike log because even if you get hit uh, I believe you are like invincible for like a second or so because like the recovery time you still can't go past that log it's not like you can just walk through things where you like become a ghost for like half a second or something so you have to like wait and walk around it there are physics in this game guys so yeah anyways we gotta help we gotta help the yeah, but it's a small key I can't even talk and we open up this door and now we can have like a you know quick shortcut from the entrance all the way here instead of walking through these spiked um, logs and stuff and you know trying to avoid them but, you know, it doesn't really matter because you have to walk over here and avoid this blade trap of uh, doom. Even though they're really easy to avoid. And we can just continue on by opening up this door. And, yeah, so far it's so good. Let's go ahead and hit this gossip stone and see how many um, chests are in this room. There are only two in this room. We can pay 20 rupees to see exactly where they are. But I think I'll be able to find them with these. So, you know, I'm just going to leave this gossip stone I'm not really willing to pay 20 rupees just to figure out because I'll be sure to look through every nook and cranny just to figure out where those chests are but anywho let's go ahead and kill these enemies as you can tell there's a part of their body that doesn't have like a shell protecting it and obviously you want to hit that part so yeah use bombs and try to have them walk by it it's a little hard usually if you hit them like with the bomb it'll immediately go off so you want to try to do that, like try to snipe them with the bomb. But in general, they're pretty easy enemies. Um, they might be a little difficult to hit because you only can hit them from the behind. But uh, if you can manage to do so, then they're easy. And Whoa, the game glitched. I was rolling down the stairs so like Link didn't go through. That was really weird. But whatever. <laughs> Anyways, as you can tell, this room is really big, just like the previous room. But a lot more empty than the previous one. It's it's filled with, with nothingness, with just blackness. And you'll see what we have to do. But first thing I want to do is hit this switch, have it uh, switch to blue instead of red. And the reason why we want to do that is so we can continue on. Now, if you didn't hit the switch, it's always fine. You can easily walk back, but you'll figure out once you make it to this room because you find these blocks of, you know, the red switch not hit. You'll, well, you have to hit the red switch to make it blue if you want these red blocks to um, go down so you can continue on and and whatnot. But anyways, let's go ahead and uh, explode this wall as well. And we'll find... <gasps> oh, okay, so it's easier to have courage to cross the void later if you know this path now. Okay, well, so we're going to cross a void later and it's just going to be easier if we know it. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and hit B1. And yeah, this is pretty much what we need to note down because we found the location that it's uh, telling you to draw. So if we go ahead and do that, we'll be able to uh, have smooth sailing from here on out and actually walk through this void. I believe it's like this. I'm not entirely sure. I wasn't really looking at the top screen. I'm just like, I looked at it for a second and decided to draw it myself because I don't want to keep looking up. But there are two chests to open. So it's going to open up as well. And oh, we got a demon chimney. Holy crap, chimney cricket, guys. That's awesome, I think. <laughs> I think the demon boat looks pretty cool, actually. So, you know, hopefully we actually get all of those parts as well. And we got ourselves a another power... Did we get ourselves a power gem before? I don't know if we got ourselves a power gem in this uh, temple yet. But we got ourselves one power gem, so yay, okay. <laughs> Anyways, if we go ahead and check out this uh, stone tablet, up, down, right left. Uh, it's not the only it's not only the order uh, for the switches nearby. So we'll be using them again, but we just have to keep that in mind. So we're gonna go ahead and do up, down. 
I think it was, yeah, I would think it was right, left, not left, right. So, you just gotta remember this order. Um, I just drew it on each side of the map, and, and that should be easy to remember, I think. But, I don't even think this is the map we're gonna... <laughs> We're gonna have to look at when we when we have the switches and all of that when we have to actually like hit the switches and stuff But it's whatever just so I can remember even though. I believe I can memorize this I'll I just decide to draw on my map for for the lulls, but Anyways, if we make our way down here We're gonna find a new enemy that I'm excited to show aside from these green choo-choos and that is a Poles voice one of the strongest enemies in the game if you don't know what to do well, okay, I couldn't really explain what I wanted to do. Basically, how this works is the Pulse Voice. Uh, I believe it was first introduced in the original Legend of Zelda, which was the first Zelda installment ever, and it was, like, never introduced in any other Zelda game after that. But, um... To kill it, you have to blow into your microphone, and it's gonna shrink down, and it's gonna die, like, from one hit if you hit it. But, if you don't, like, blow into your microphone or, like, talk really loudly, it's... It, obviously because the microphone picked up my commentary um it's gonna be like extremely strong and just like beat the crap out of you and take like a hundred hits and take a heart every single time it hits you so yeah it's really strong but you couldn't really experience that because you know i i was talking too loud so yeah the power of commentary everybody commentate even if you're not recording just anything you do just commentate your life and maybe one day you'll kill a pole's voice without really knowing it so yeah <laughs> i don't know where i'm going with this but anyways this is uh the area where we actually want to use the up down right left method thing that we jotted down on our map so let's go ahead and do that so this is up and then we're gonna go in and have a tab. But yeah, it's it's really interesting, like the polls voice, how they like brought it back into this game, and it actually uses like the microphone feature. Now you may say, oh, if it was in the original Legend of Zelda, how did you like you know use the microphone feature and all of that stuff? Well, you didn't. Um, what you did actually is you just had to like shoot it with like weapons. But I believe I've heard in uh for the I, I'm not entirely sure. I believe like for the Japanese or. I believe it's like the Japanese uh, Nintendo. They had a. Let's go ahead and pick up this after we pull the switches. We got ourselves a square crystal. But yeah, um, for the Japanese uh, Nintendo, they had a controller. Like one of the controllers, I believe it was like Player 2's controller, had a microphone built into it. And if you talked into it while fighting Pulse Voices, they die. Um, but we couldn't experience that because in, in North America, we didn't really get the controller with. Um, speakers or with a microphone rather in it so yeah that's why it doesn't really make sense to like talk into it i mean if you played the original of zelda or you knew that rumor that like the japanese or i'm not entirely sure who had it but i i know there there was like a certain region that got that type of um uh, what's it called? Nintendo, and they were able to experience, you know, actually killing the Pole's voice with your voice, so, yeah. But, obviously, the only way I figured out is because I heard that rumor, and then I was like, wait, what if I talk into my microphone? Will it work? And it did, and I, like, freaked out and got super excited. I'm like, I'm a genius, everybody, but I really wasn't. Um, and I wasn't paying attention, and that guy just knocked me off. Alright, let's go ahead and try again. Run really fast, because I don't care. Um, I believe... Wait, yeah, we have to head over here. Just follow my map. I gotta trust myself sometimes. And I shouldn't trust myself ever because I am stupid as crap. <laughs> I'm actually looking at my map and not the bottom screen. And I think that's why it's making it a little more difficult. So we have to make our way up here. Go down and there we go. We fell twice, but it's okay. We got ourselves a bow and arrow. That's the item of the temple. So, yeah. I believe we Can you hit these guys? No, they can't. Like, see, they're all, like, um, rubbery when you hit them with your sword, but with anything else, they're, like, rock solid. It's kind of weird. The number of chests in this room is two. There's two left. Okay. Gotta keep that in mind. Um, but anyways, let's go ahead and hit this. I believe that, yeah, that's it. There's only two more chests we need to get from these two rooms, and we'll be set, because we already got the other two that were in the previous room, so... Yeah, we're good to go. Um, anyways, yeah, by hitting that eye with our bow and arrow, we can advance. Which is really easy, and I believe if you hit this guy like that, you can easily snipe him and kill him immediately, which is awesome. I really, really, really love the way the bow and arrow works in this game, because it's super, super precise. Because, literally, wherever your stylus is, it's gonna go off. So, like, watch. I'm gonna shoot it. Uh, I want to, like, do a 360 sin. 364, 2700! 
it's not working okay I, I, I whatever forget it <laughs> let's go ahead and just uh, adjust this weird looking um, it looks like a bow honestly with like a crystal ball in the middle but you want to yeah, adjust it and it will take your arrow and transport it all the way to another section and and it will yeah there we go and that's how we hit the switch and we need to have the switches red this time so we can you know have the blue uh, blocks go down and now we can advance I'm gonna kill this guy like wait oh geez no he sees me run away get away from me All right, come on I can't hit it there we go I just want to hit him from afar because I don't want him to hurt me and we'll find a lot of ammo uh, as time goes on hopefully okay whatever there whoa I was able to hit him just like that that was pretty nice okay you can also kill these green choo choos with it uh, green choo choos are a lot harder to kill with your sword because they avoid it they like jump down and stuff so yeah my headset's falling off again which is awesome and now I can't hear the game audio and I kind of want to hear the game audio so there we go I readjusted it and everything <laughs> Go ahead and see what's over here. I believe there are arrows, yes, and I could definitely use some, so yeah. Um, but anyways, now what we want to do, we saw like another like hole here. We want to pick it up and, and take this crystal uh, square all the way to that weird, uh, to that square indent in the floor. It wasn't, no, it's just like this placement. So you go ahead and place it in, and you can just advance just like that. I actually wonder what this, I believe this gossip stone tells you that you need to put it in, so I'm just not even going to bother checking out the gossip stone. But anyways, let's go ahead and make our way up here, and we're going to need our arrows for this if we want to do this easily. Um, you can easily like, snipe all of these guys. Oh, two arrow mambo combo. I, I actually screwed that up. Because I, I shot another arrow expecting it not to die. But anyways, once we kill them all, a bridge will appear. Either from nowhere. And we can continue on. And I have no arrows. And I actually need arrows. So I don't know why I've wasted all of them. Even on the ones that were like right in front of me. It's going to hit this though. And see what's in this room though. There's three chests in this room. So alright, because this is a new floor. I don't believe we ever accessed it. Actually, no, we did. We accessed it while we were doing the switches. Like just north from where we are. But yeah, so there are more chests to get, but we'll be able to get them with these. And wow, I just like jumped there. That was awesome. Okay. Anyways, as you can tell, there are eyes over there that we're gonna wanna um, hit with our bow. So we're gonna be doing just that in a bit. Will we, you know, ride these uh, blocks? I believe I can. Can I snipe it from here? Ah, oh, that would have been so cool. Ah, oh, man, and I fell. And if you fall off of a moving platform, you immediately get taken back to the non-moving platform of course uh, it just makes sense for them to do that but yeah no I don't think I can looks a lot harder actually no I can watch yeah all right I could easily just jump on the other platform but I'm too lazy and I want to just get this chest so you have to like hit both of the eyes and once you do that you hit yourself a hey, another power gem now we got two in this uh, temple which is pretty rad but anyways, let's stop jumping to our death and and just wait for these platforms. You gotta be patient in this part because if you're not, you'll end up losing a bunch of hearts and gotta be aware of the keys as well. <laughs> All right, let's just go ahead and snipe these guys. Oh wait, wait, no, go, go, go! Ah, darn it, man! I keep falling. I believe I do have a potion on me though, so I think I think we're safe. Let's go ahead and check while I'm writing this. Yeah, we do. Okay, sweet. All right, <sighs> we're fine. And then go ahead and make our way over here. There are blade traps moving back and forth that we want to quickly avoid. As well as, oh jeez, oh jeez, open. Crap, there we go. You want to hit these BMOs with your bombs. Obviously, they don't die or, or explode or anything like that. Um, it's only for like a short period of time, so you gotta hurry. But anyways, after we do that, we want to go ahead and push this over here. Run around. Oh jeez, don't jump off. You're going to keep losing hearts if I do that. Like, after I get hit, I just jump off, like, right after. But, yeah, now what we want to do is, like, trap this blade trap. So now the blade trap has been trapped. Ha <laughs> ha! Take that. And now we can continue and open up this chest as well. We got ourselves a dark pearl loop. Obviously, all of the, the, like, treasure chests you get from dungeons or anything, they're always randomized. So, yeah. And that's why it's, like, hard to, like, have a lot of, like, certain items you really want. Because, you know, it's always randomized. You might get really unlucky and, and get, like, the crappiest of items or something. But anyway, this is another shortcut to head back here. And I actually 
I, uh, I fancy myself a couple of hearts, so we're gonna go and grab some from here, from, like, the entrance, and we'll continue on with our adventure, so let's head down here, and continue onwards, so I'm gonna jump like this, grab my arrows, actually, I think, I believe you're gonna need your boomerang for this one here, and, uh, you just wait for, uh, wait for that to appear, wait for this platform, but if you go ahead and look up, yeah, you'll find, uh, Tor one torch that's lit and the rest are unlit, so we're gonna have to obviously, uh, it should be pretty darn obvious that we're gonna have to light all of the torches. And my headset keeps like falling off, I don't know why. I thought my head was pretty darn big, but apparently it's not. Because, <laughs> like, I have to expand to like the max. What? How did. Well, that's just great. Can I do this? Oh, oh, okay, now watch this, guys. D -d 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 oh man, I made it. I was so freaking close. Well, I. I, I made it, so yeah, that was so freaking close. That's what I mean. <laughs> but anyways, what we want to do is just knock this freaking guy off. All right, there we go. And then hit this with our boomerang to have it face this way so we can advance just like so. So there we go. And yeah. And now we can continue, but wait. If we go ahead and hit this one more time and then shoot a bow into it like so <gasps> we're gonna get ourselves a chest let's see what's inside this chest we got a wisdom gem yeah now we can continue on so let's do just that we're almost done you guys though like we're really close to the end all right blah 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 hey 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 shut up pole's voice yeah you sit there don't move all right i'm gonna be quiet and actually try to fight it, guys. So watch this. Okay, you see how it does a heart? See how it's hitting? I have to be quiet so I can like do this. Okay, now stop! Sit down! Sit down, Paul's voice! Sit down! Don't! I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna kill it. Thank you. <laughs> I like how it does half a heart as well. So, like, when it's small and you do get hurt by it, it also, like, doesn't do as much damage. It's pretty funny. But yeah, there you go. That's the wrath of the Paul's voice, guys. If, if you don't talk... It's going to beat you up. I'm surprised the microphone actually picked up just my commentary. I thought I had to like blow into the microphone. But surprisingly, I didn't. So, this is like the final stretch of the um, temple. Uh, we're almost really there. And once again, I'm readjusting my headset because my headphones keep falling off. And it's it's really annoying and like super unprofessional, but whatever. All right. <laughs> gonna hit this first I want to hit this gossip stone just to show you so boing to move the platform to move the floating platform where you want dry path on your map as, as sketchy and weird as that sounds you actually do and it's weird because it's really unresponsive like if you go ahead and do like a twirly twirl like that it's not gonna go to the twirly twirl it's gonna watch what it's gonna do uh, yeah, yeah th there you go so it's not like um, it's not like uh, when you're when you're sailing with your boat and stuff. But anyways, what I want to do actually is draw it here, go all the way down afterwards, head over here, and then we're going to do a line heading back here. But I shouldn't draw that yet because that's going to ruin up the pathing for the floating platform. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and just have it go down like this and then end off here for now. So let's go ahead and hit this eye. Obviously, the reason why I'm heading there, as you can tell, each pillar on the map is going to have an eye. But you want to hit it in that order of up, down, right, left. Because remember that, I believe the Gossip Stone or the Stone Slate, I don't know which one we got the information from. But it said uh, the up, down, left, right thing, or yeah, right, left, um, is not only for the, the puzzle that we took on previously. It was for something else. And... It, it meant for this room as well, so yeah, let's go ahead and do this, and then we'll have it head back here. Once we're, actually, I don't even think we have to set a route to head all the way back up, because I'll show you something pretty neat. But let's go ahead and hit the final eye. Um, I don't know if it's timed or anything, but I think you have a good amount of time to hit all of the eyes. But once you do that, there you go, a chest appears. Now, the easiest way to get to the chest, honestly, is just to jump down just like that. And there you go, we got ourselves the boss key. It's huge. Uh, heavy key. Yeah, alright, now, let's go ahead and reroute our, uh, destination all the way to the boss door. Easiest way to do that is just to do a line like this, and there we go. So let's go ahead and take the boss key and get going. 
But yeah, if you fall off, obviously you, you, you're taking it back all the way to the first platform, or the platform that you were recently on that doesn't move, of course, so that's why I suggest just falling down, lose a half a heart, it's definitely worth it because you cut off a lot of time. So, yeah, now it's time to dun 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 dun, dun throw the giant key into the boss door. The boss door looks so weird, though. It's like a cup, and you just drop the key and it, like, goes down. I don't know. But anyways, <laughs> it's time, guys. So let's go ahead and see. Uh, I didn't even read yeah, I didn't even read that. Let's just go ahead and make it right up here. I want it to be more exciting when you guys see what happens, so I'm not going to spoil anything. But if we look on our map... We'll find, yes, a secret. Let's go ahead and wait for this bomb to explode. And open up this chest. This chest is going to give us a courage gem. Awesome. Now, before we do enter the boss door, I obviously want to pick up as much uh, supplies as I can from here. And we want to have the blue exit appear. So, yeah, there we go. There's, there is a portal that will take us to the entrance of the temple. If we so desire, but you know, I don't need that. And now it's time to take out the arrows, because that's obviously the item of the temple. And let's head up. So, get ready for this, guys. This is one of the coolest bosses in the game. So once we make our way up here, it looks like we're in an arena. You know, the door has shut behind us, and we're in this really cool area. Actually, it does look like an arena, like the crowd would be up there. But anyways, here we are against Crake. It's a, yeah, it's this. It goes invisible. And look at that. Ah! Let's hit it. <laughs> As you can see, the top screen is its vision. How freaking awesome is that? Is that? And, like, you get to see it in 3D. I actually don't, I don't want to break the shell completely. Oh, I already did? God dang it. Why is it so, this is a really easy boss, guys. But it's such a cool boss. I wanted to show you guys more of the, it's like, you know, its vision. Because basically what it does is it tries to ram into you, and then you have to shoot it with an arrow when it's looking at you, and like, Link does a lot of funny faces when it's coming towards it, and like, you can see Link from like, every direction instead of like, this top-down-ish perspective, so, yeah, um, I'm really upset that, that we couldn't really experience it for too long. The boss is freaking over, guys! We're done! <laughs> so basically what I want to do is break a shell, and then hit it, um, from the front, after a shell is broken, and it will block your attack, and while it's blocking, you want to walk around it and hit its blue tail, and, and that's really it, and as you can tell, we're done. Whoa, and look at the background! It's like painted trees! I never noticed that! That is actually freaking awesome! And now Link gets his Phantom Hourglass out, because it's time to get more Sand of Hours into our Phantom Hourglass, because, you know, the boss contains some Sand of Hours. So yeah. So here we go. <gasps> Oh, yeah, I love this animation. Woo! You get more sand for the Phantom Hourglass. Two minutes have been added. Alright, guys, it's the moment of truth. The Spirit of Courage. You look just like me! What happened? Something seems weird. Something's odd, but... You got the spirit of courage? Maybe you now can find the ghost ship? Huh. Um. So, so, so we got the spirit of courage, but, but it's, it's not like the other spirits. It's not, you know, all excited and it wasn't even talking. It just looks like it's like floating, soulless. I wonder, guys. It looks a lot like Celia as well. We'll soon have our answer, but for now, let's go ahead and and reward ourselves with a heart container. Yeah! And now we can exit the temple. So, 
I think that does that for this episode. In the next episode, we'll hopefully make our way back to Murkay Island and let uh, Ochus know about all of this, as well as do some side questing things. But, like I said, that does it for this episode. So thank you all very much for watching this episode of Phantom Hourglass. I've been Zelda Master, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Goodbye. Ha!